<laughs> My name is uh, Roberto Fernandez. I work uh, in the embedded uh, vision department in IMEN Technology Center. And today I will be presenting um, this part of the of the webinar with uh, with NIT, which is the manufacturer of uh, the infrared sensors that we use in the project. And together we are in charge of uh, the design and implementation of the monitoring and control system for the custodian project. <clears throat> so uh, I, uh, we divided the presentation in in two parts. First, uh, we will talk about the infrared sensing technology for laser processes and the advantages which can be achieved with uh, using embedded systems. And afterwards, uh, NEED will continue the presentation uh, showing uh, real products and applications which uh, use this, this technology. So uh, infrared sensors have shown very uh, effective in in monitoring uh, uh, la um, laser processes uh, because the radiation that typically uh, emanates from these uh, processes are uh, in the ranges of uh, 800 to uh, 1040 degrees uh, which are very um, <clears throat> which are in the, in the range that the infrared sensors um, can detect, and especially uh, medium wave infrared sensors are very effective. In the right side of the presentation, I show the difference between the image that, that can, can be captured from a um, laser welding process using a visible camera, a medium wave infrared uh, camera. As observed, um, the amount of information that the infrared camera uh, gets is much uh, much higher, especially in the tail of the of the um, of the process after the laser the laser uh, spot uh, passes. So you can get a lot of the information about the thermal treatment that the that the part uh, is receiving. So uh, we can use these uh, images to get features about the the. The, how the laser is uh, affecting the, the material and use this information to <clears throat> uh, monitor the, the process, also the, the equ equipment. We, if something goes wrong, we can use this, these images. For example, if the, some uh, protection elements are heating up, we, we can see this in, also in the, in the cameras. And we can also use this, um, this information to close a control loop and do uh, control of uh, some um, <clears throat> some features of the of the process. <clears throat> so, uh, as I said, using these images, we can we can do uh, extract uh, a lot of uh, features. Most common of them are uh, length, width, or area of the of the melt pool. Uh, in the case of custodian, for example, we are uh, interesting in the thermal uh, process, uh, which is relate, related to the crack appearance. So we, we try to measure um, and the cooling rate of the, of, uh, of the melt pool. So we do some, uh, we, we, we cut the, um, the melt pool information um, through the symmetry uh, axis, and we get the, <clears throat> the 2D figure in the right. And then we apply some uh, very simple uh, image processing, and we smooth the, the signal, and we calculate the, the cooling rate. Uh, in the bottom part of the slide, uh, there is an off-axis um, um, off mon monitoring of uh, 3D printing uh, of a, a small cylinder. And in this case, we can also, uh, <clears throat> for example, measure the, the degree of uh, heat that the part has, and we can use this information, for example, to to adjust the power or stop the process in case the the the, um, the temperature is very high. Also, now with the new technology and advances in uh, artificial intelligence, we can use uh, deep neural networks to extract. Uh, high-level features uh, from the images, which are very difficult with uh, traditional approaches. 
for example, we can um, we we could we can we we can try to uh, detect cracks using the the images, which is very difficult uh, just by, by analyzing it, even with the naked eye about this. Or uh, we could, for example, uh, in other projects we have uh, tried to measure the um, the distance between the part and the and the robot. Um, so we we can control the the distance between the part and the and the laser head, and we uh, maintain constant the the focusing distance, for example. And last, uh, I prepared the a slide about the embedded embedded systems used for uh, implementing this kind of uh, processing. Uh, so the uh, laser processes are very fast, so uh, we need high processing power in order to to be able to do uh, fast uh, monitoring and control of the of the process. So in this case, the most uh, useful uh, computing architecture is the FPGA, which enables to implement uh, any digital circuit. Um, and uh, <clears throat> enable us to, to process, uh, to do the image processing in, in parallel at the same time that the image uh, is being acquired from a sensor. And at the same time that a processor is, for example, uh, implementing the the control logic. So uh, in the right side of the of the image uh, is the architecture used uh, in custodian. We capture from the directly from the FPA uh, the image from the uh, NITS sensors. Then uh, we do the image processing, uh, like filtering, background correction, and smoothing and melt pool uh, uh, feature extraction, like the cooling rate. And then we save this to the uh, uh, to the processor in the system, and then uh, from the processor we we can control the uh, variables of, that affect the process. We we can control using an analog signal the the laser power. We can also control the robot or scanner used to to move the laser spot. And for example, in the case of custodian, we we control the MPLC um, being shaped also uh, using this. And then we, uh, through the laser process and the sensor, we we close the the loop. So uh, this architecture gives uh, high advantages. For example, if we capture the um, the image and send it to a computer and and do the image processing and and control algorithms there, uh, we can only get a few frames per second, like uh, less than 100. And in this case, we are able to achieve uh, almost um, 10,000 frames per second. In this case, we are uh, talking about very small uh, frame size, uh, 64 by 64 bits. But this is still very, very high uh, frame rate in comparison with uh, with doing the processing in a computer. And we also get a very small latency because uh, the information does not have to travel uh, through the internet communication to reach to the to the computer. So now uh, NIT uh, is going to present uh, uh, real products based on this uh, architecture and this technology, these uh, infrared sensors, and also um, real uh, success applications uh, of it. So. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot, uh, Roberto. So we are passing now the role to Rodrigo Herrero Linares from NIT. Um, so. You can continue with the presentation, Rodrigo. Thank you. Okay, your okay. presentation is loading. Great. Okay, thank you. So um, in the next slides, I will show you some products that our company uh, can offer to the 3D printing uh, sector mainly. Uh, but uh, these are summarized as high-speed infrared cameras and solutions for uh, process uh, monitoring and control and quality assurance. Um, we have these cameras and solutions targeted to uh, integrators or solution developers and end users that are involved in 3D printing or laser, laser uh, processing applications. First, I would like to start with uh, Clamir. Um, it's a solution that we have designed to, to control 
a laser directed energy deposition process like LMD or laser metal deposition or laser cladding. The way that CLAMIR operates is uh, performing a continuous monitoring and geometrical measurement of the melt pool with the infrared camera at high speed at 1,000 images per second. And then it performs an accurate control of the laser power during the process in order to maintain the melt pool with a constant. With this, uh, it's possible to ensure the quality and the repeatability of the, of the process. This is all done in, in closed loop. Uh, and in real time, because we have embedded the camera with the processing electronics and the control electronics. Uh, this system is compatible with most of the laser optics and, and powders. It's uh, easily integrated and, and configured. It's also an, a standalone uh, solution, as it doesn't require a permanent connection to a PC, because as I mentioned before, we have combined the, everything together in the, same, in the same orange box that you can see on the, you know, the photo on the left. Uh, we have many customers um, around the world that rely on CLAMIR for their uh, process control of LMD and, and cladding. And just as a, as a remark, uh, this system, CLAMIR, was awarded by the European Commission in 2018 with the Innovation Radar Prize in the category Industrial and Enabling uh, Technology. As I mentioned uh, before, uh, CLAMIR is compatible with laser optics. Uh, with all the laser optics that are mostly used in, in these kind of applications. In this slide, you can see some photos of CLAMIR installed in different optics from Trump, LaserLine, and, and Presitec. And you can also see how uh, small and compact the system is. As I mentioned before, it's quite easy to uh, integrate uh, mechanically and electrically in, into the processing uh, system. Uh, here you can see uh, the benefit of using CLAMIR for the control of the laser during the process. So if uh, the, control, the laser is not controlled, uh, this can lead to defective parts, uh, as we can see in the example of the two metal tubes shown below on the right. So you can see that the right one uh, shows the clear effect of overheating uh, compared to the one in the left, which uh, has been built with a power control. Of course, uh, one strategy that the manufacturer of these parts can follow is to avoid the overheating is to stop the process and let the part cool down before continuing uh, with the process. But uh, this will cause an unplanned stop of production and, and reduce of the efficiency of the, of, the pro of the manufacturing process. However, with CLAMIR, it's possible to have a continuous and high quality um, manufacturing process like uh, we show in the cuboid that is uh, in the in the left in the photo in the left. Clamir can also help to optimize the process and improve the productivity, as it's a powerful uh, monitoring tool. In the image on the right, uh, in the composition that we have made on the right, you can see the 3D reconstruction of the instantaneous thermal gradient for the same part, built with a control on the left and without control uh, on the right. So you can see that without control, there is an accumulation of heat towards the upper layers as the part is being uh, built. And in addition, you can see the difference of, uh, in the finishing of the, of the two parts. Um, all this data was acquired and analyzed with the, thank you, thanks to the cataloging capabilities offered by the system. And this is part of, of a work done by Ayman in, a, in the Integrade project. Another solution offered by NIT is I3MS. Uh, this stands for Inline Infrared Monitoring System. We have designed this, uh, this solution for a continuous monitoring and measurement of the melt pool and the, heat, and the width of the heat affected zone. This is uh, exactly like CLAMIR, it's a standalone system. It can be installed coaxially or off axis, but everything is done internally, of the, internally in, the, in the camera. The two main features of I3MS are that the melt pool width is available as an analog output. And so this, um, you, the user has information of possible deviations in the melt pool width during the process. And also it allows to set up uh, two levels uh, of alarm, one for warning and another one for failure. Uh, for example, when the width is deviating from the nominal value, this can trigger a corrective action uh, in the PLC or, um, for example, stop the, the process. This system um, is used in 
DD, laser uh, directed energy deposition process with powder and wire in order to monitor the, the as I mentioned, the, uh, the melt pool width, and also in wire arc additive uh, manufacturing. Just to finish my presentation, I would like to, to show you the Tachyon 16K Camera Plus, which is uh, right now our state-of-the-art product. This is a high-speed infrared uh, camera in the mid-IR. Um, with an uncooled with uncooled operation, uh, and this is used uh, for monitoring uh, the process uh, in some custodian uh, partners. The camera has a resolution of 128 by 128 pixels and can acquire images at a frame rate of 4,000 frames per second at the full frame rate, and it has a machine vision interfaces like uh, Gigivision and Genicam uh, and Genicam. This is a a power over Ethernet uh, system. It has allows a snap of snapshot acquisition so that all the pixels are uh, captured at the same time. One, of course, one 3D printing method that can benefit from these features is the powder diffusion process, which is very dynamic and requires very high frame rates. So on the right, you can see the camera coaxial integrated in the PVF uh, machine and the image of the melt pool, and this image can be processed to obtain relevant information such as the dimensions and infrared intensity of the melt pool and study the relationship with the movement of the scanner or the applied power, or of course study the cooling rate in real time as it was shown in, in some slides uh, before. And here the advantage of our technology versus uh, the CCD cameras is that uh, the capability to detect lower uh, temperatures. So, with this uh, slide, um, I finish, we finish the presentation from my men and it, and I hope that we could give you a better understanding of what we do and what we can offer uh, to the 3D printing uh, chain. Thank you.